Hey ladies and gents, Brendan Murphy coming at you here from the depths of the pixel dump. Now it goes without saying that color correction is an essential part of the visual effects workflow, but it can be very time consuming to get it just right. PD Color Match gets you started much more quickly by matching the shadows and highlights of the original plate. Let's take a look at how this works. Here I have some footage of a young tech guru on the verge of a major Silicon Valley breakthrough. And I also have some footage of a bear. That will work perfectly. Because as we all know, this is the cautionary tale of a man who became too engrossed in his work and did not see the bear coming. I'm going to quickly speed through a couple of steps here to set up a basic composite so we can get to the meat of this demonstration. Okay, and there we go. You can see we're starting to get somewhere. The bear is placed in the shot, but our colors do not match at all. You can see that in the foreground here, we have some of these very milky shadows from the flare in the upper right hand side of the image. And there's part of the physical flare here. We also are getting some of the magenta tones mixed in from the flare as well. So let's go ahead and get this color matched. I'm gonna come over to where I have the PD color match panel already docked on the right and then I'll click on color pick. The first thing you'll see is this warning dialog. Please select a target layer first, followed by a source layer. Now what that means is to run this effect, you first need to select a bear, followed by the background footage. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna select the bear, followed by our background plate, and then I'll go back and do color pick. Pick values on target and source layers. So as you can see, this is walking you through the process as you go. So I'll go to my target layer and pick target sample highlight, and then actually select some value in the image that represents a highlight. In this case, this highlight area on the bear corresponds nicely to some of these highlights on the foreground man. The best reference here is actually gonna be this black hoodie because it so closely matches the color of the bear's fur. We're gonna get the highlight detail and the shadow detail we need to accurately match the colors. I'm gonna keep this one here in the highlight and then I'm gonna go select something in the shadow area. Now you can see a lot of the shadow information here is crushed so I'm actually gonna use the gamma setting under my viewport and make sure that I'm actually picking one of the darker colors. And I'll gamma back down. Then I'm gonna go to our background plate and pick the corresponding highlight over here on the hoodie. And you can zoom in to place this more accurately. Then I'm gonna pick the corresponding shadow value here. And I'll gamma up again just to make sure we're picking a true shadow area here. And then back down. And all right, I think that's a good start. Now that our values are picked, I'm gonna go on over to color match. And just like before, you get this dialog telling you to select the target followed by the source. It's walking you through as you go. So that will of course be the bear followed by your background. And then color match. Color match complete. As you can see, it instantly matches the values of the source plate. Now the really great thing about this is that all the tool has really done is calculate the exact adjustments needed to match the colors and it's applied those adjustments as a series of levels effects. It's not some hidden operation under the hood that can't be adjusted. And in fact, I have these sliders here, which can be used to blend some of the original image back in and really tweak and fine tune the amount of color correction that is being applied. I'm gonna zero these back out. But actually in this case, I think I do want to blend some of the color back a little bit since the flaring is mostly happening around the right side of the image and not as much around the left side, the bear should actually be somewhere in between. So let me set this to something maybe like 17 and go maybe 15 or so down here. And that's looking pretty good. I'm actually going to go in and add an additional levels adjustment on top of that. And I want to go to the green channel and pull back on the magenta just a little, and then maybe lift the blacks a touch overall. That's looking a little better. 
Maybe I'll actually tweak the gamma a touch as well. The next thing I'm going to do is go up and add a camera lens blur. And then I'll just eyeball this a little bit to match some of the leaves around where the bear is sitting. Maybe 11. And then I'm going to pre-compose this, move all attributes, so that I can add a couple of finishing touches. And there you go. As you can see, I've Pop the highlights a little bit here to match the leaves and added this shadow. So a PD color match is obviously going to work best in a scenario like this where you're matching a true highlight color and shadow color to a corresponding highlight and shadow color. But what about a more extreme scenario? Here's an example where I have two elements. One is this red box that has two different tones in it, this saturated red and this darker red here. Then I have a separate green element for the background, which has also two tones, this lighter green here, and then kind of a middle green. Now, I generally would not recommend using color match for an extreme color shift like this, simply because both of our reference points are on the same layer. You can really be stretching or squeezing the histogram to make both of these values fit. You can get to a point where it's just too extreme and falls apart. However, I do want to showcase how far you can go and also show you another feature. So I'll go ahead and select the red element followed by the green element and do color pick. And it asks us to select our values, which I will do up in the effects panel here. For the highlight, I will pick this lighter red color. And for the shadow, I'll pick the darker red. And then on our green element, of course, I'll select the light green for the highlight and the darker green for the shadow. Then once again selecting the target followed by the source and I'll color match. Color match complete. As you can see it did an okay job but that's not an exact match. What gives? Looking at the shadow color I see that it matched that perfectly. If I go over here in the effects panel and turn off the shadow you can see that it actually did match the highlight perfectly before applying the shadow but it's just the extreme adjustment that threw the highlight back off. Fortunately, we built in a feature to fix this. So let's undo that. And then go over to this other button that says double match. Double match complete. And look at that. You can now see that the highlights do match perfectly and the shadows match perfectly. And it did this by running two passes of the color match process. You can see there's this Highlight here, followed by a shadow, followed by highlight 2, followed by shadow 2. And both of the highlight effects are attached to this single highlight slider. And both of the shadow effects are attached to a single shadow slider, allowing you to fine tune the effect as desired. So that's it everybody. I've gotten a lot of miles out of this tool and I hope it proves useful for you as well. Be sure to check out some of our other tools and we'll catch you next time at the Pixel Dump.